Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. And good afternoon, everyone. Phil Panarski here with the Wood TV Live Desk. Hope you're having a great start to your Wednesday. Digital reporter Matt Jarowski is here once again to discuss one of his latest pieces. And this one that we're going to be discussing today focuses on Michigan's power grid and where we get our energy from and what is expected to change in the coming years. Matt, great to see you again. Let's first talk about the story. Uh, for those who maybe haven't gotten the chance to check out the story just yet, uh, give us a little bit of a brief synopsis on what the story entails. Yeah, really, so uh, late last month, Michigan Public Service Commission uh, issued their, their big report on basically what needs to change for Michigan's electric grid as our energy industry continues to evolve. Um, the two key things, you know, they're moving away from, from coal towards green resources, a lot more solar, uh, wind power, more natural gas, those kind of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, we, like we know, consumers energy is going to go, is expected to be coal free by 2025, which would make them one of the first utility companies across the country to be completely coal free. DTE's latest plan has them coal free by 2032. So we know that these changes are coming. These are major investments that are billions and billions of dollars so what do we need to do to the grid to make sure that uh, these power supplies work work well uh, and that plays into the second point we're moving away from centralized energy sources like a power plant whether it's nuclear coal whatever towards a diversity a diverse amount of sources whether it's solar farms wind farms people that have solar panels on their homes uh, or, or, or other methods of gathering energy, the basis comes down to is the grid is right now built to send energy one way from the power plant to your home, to your business, to wherever. Now the grid needs to be built where it's more flexible and that power can not just be sent one way, it can be sent back to the generator plants as well for people who have solar panels on their homes. That extra energy instead of getting lost can be sent back to the company, which, uh, which saves energy saves people money mm -hmm. right now and the story uh, kind of tackles two different points obviously the news that uh, these these energy companies are already deciding to make the switch from coal to more renewable energies and then also what the state has to do to really get yeah. ready for all of these changes what are some of those major changes you mentioned solar panels and uh, in the sto article it mentions wind yep. turbines that can potentially help and with all these other renewable uh, energy sources, what are some of the other changes that are gonna be coming to the state in the coming years? I think, so I, to learn more about the story, I interviewed Dan Scripps. He's the chairman of the MPSC. The MPSC uh, launched an initiative in 2019 of basically, we need to get a better understanding of how our power grid works. And the legislature actually signed a couple pieces of, of uh, legislation in 2020 uh, telling the MPSC like, hey, it's it's your job to investigate all this, research this, and guide what the state needs to do going forward. So that's what this big report that was published last month, it, it comes from all of that. Uh, some of the big changes that we'll see aside from the this new sources of energy, mm -hmm. um, Scripps talked about just how we use that energy. Um, a lot more things rely on electricity now than they did 10, 20, 50 years ago. He mentioned uh, EVs are going to be a big part of that. Homes and businesses are now going to be a primary responsibility for not just powering homes, but also powering a lot of automobiles. So that's something that will have to be, you know, make sure that our power grid and our energy sources are ready to tackle that added responsibility, but also that we can use EVs in some ways to, to help our power grid. He mentioned one of the big stories when the F-150 uh, Lightning first came out a couple of years ago, and now they have these capabilities where if your home loses power for whatever reason, you can use your vehicle to power your home, um, which is kind of a, a complete game changer as far as that stuff uh, is concerned. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, obviously on the flip side of that, you mentioned how these companies are making changes, what is going to be going from coal to more renewable energies, these changes are going to be happening. Uh, but what are some of the big obstacles other than the fact that these are just major changes? Is there anything that's potentially going to get in the way or could really, uh, you know, push these changes back further uh, down the timeline? 
I think one of the biggest hangups is making sure that people are are impacted as little as possible. Uh, we know changes will need to be made and they'll be made over time. Uh, the question is, how can we do that seamlessly? So I think that will be part of the plan going forward. I know one of the big focuses too, and the MPSC uh, mentioned this both in the interview and in the report of, you know, tackling power outages, making sure our response gets better, building in more, uh, you know, building in more obstacles in that way to prevent those or to shorten the time of those outages is one of the big things that they're going to be tackling. So as we're updating the grid, that's going to be one of the primary focuses as well. Mm -hmm. And Matt, you know, you mentioned at the very beginning of that answer there that one of the big keys is making sure that this doesn't impact uh, consumers, really the Michiganders across the state who uh, use the energy in their everyday lives. You know, you've got to make sure that this doesn't impact them too much. Uh, is it too early to tell potentially what those impacts could bring to the everyday consumer or there's some things that these companies are already taking inventory of and trying to make sure that they can limit those impacts? Yeah, I think there's still a lot that we'll learn as this goes on. I mean, this is not a happening today, happening tomorrow kind of right. problem. This is something that's going to be evolving for years and decades. Um, so as far as what those impacts can be, it's a little too early to say. I know that, you know, and like I mentioned earlier, one of the things that they're hoping for by providing this added flexibility of, of a two-way grid system instead of a one-way system, um, that hopefully is the biggest impact, is that people will be able to save money and uh, draw their own energy and send them back to the plant instead of the other way around. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, Matt, and I want to remind everybody that if you haven't gotten the chance to check out Matt's latest piece on the future of Michigan's power grid, I highly recommend you do so. You can find it right now over on our website, woodtv.com. If you're watching us on Facebook, just head on down to the description box or the comment section. You'll find a link to that story right there. Matt, as always, thank you so much for stopping by the live desk. We'll see you next week. Anytime. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank everybody else for tuning in to this latest edition of the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm Phil Panarski, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.